Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. On the mound for Detroit is Jack Morris, whose record is 7-1 with a 3.02 ERA. And pitching for the Red Sox today is Dennis Boyd, whose record is 5-2 with a 3.63 ERA. We got back to our winning ways yesterday, be beating the uh, Red Sox 5-2. Ricky Henderson had a big home run. Uh, even though he was listed as tired, it's the first time this season that a, a player had been listed as tired. So we're going to give Ricky the official day off today. And um, move on to game three of the three-game series. I just want to point this fact out real quick. If you take a look at the uh, standings, um, flipping over to the American League. Here we go. Uh, so if we were to lose today, hypothetically, and the Yankees would win, that would move them within three games. And then look, looking at the uh, calendar here, you'll see that we have a three-game series versus the Yankees at Yankee Stadium coming up starting tomorrow. So in four days, we could be tied for first. So we want to avoid uh, this debacle here by uh, winning today. And then hopefully winning uh, a couple of the of the three games at Yankee Stadium. So let's get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. We've got Jack Morris on the mound today. The current Red Sox lineup is batting 321 against him in 145 plate appearances. So that's significant. Uh, Bruce Robbins will not be available today. He pitched a couple innings in yesterday's ball game. Also, uh, as you can see here, we've had Roy Thomas up for a couple days now. And I wanted to do a little research on him. I thought this was interesting because, you know, we started our sim in 1980. And he hasn't pitched since uh, 1980 before we, we utilized him here. And he doesn't have a card for 1983, but he does have one here represented for 1984. And I'm like, well, so where was Roy Thomas during this period? I did some research on his transactions in Major League Baseball, and it blew me away. So I just want to share this with you real quick before we get on with it. He was drafted, Roy Thomas was drafted in 1971 as a first round draft pick by Philadelphia. He was traded from Philadelphia to the Chicago White Sox in 1975 for Jim Cott. And then in 76, he was drafted by the Mariners uh, in the uh, expansion draft. The Mariners subsequently traded him to Houston, as you can see here, uh, in 1977 for Larry Milbourne. And then in 78, as you can see here with St. Louis, he was uh, selected off waivers from Houston. He became a St. Louis Cardinal. And then in 1980, uh, the year we started our sim, uh, he was dr uh, drafted by Oakland in the Rule 5 draft, became an Oakland A. And then the next season, he was traded to Seattle from Oakland. So that's how he got back to Seattle. Um, after being drafted in the expansion draft in 1976, traded to Seattle for Rusty McNeely, who's their current center fielder. And then he pitched for Seattle um, until he retired from baseball in 1985. And then in 1987, at age 37, he came back to pitch in the minor leagues after two years off for Milwaukee. Um, so, at eight, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. In 1987, he left baseball for two years and then came back and pitched in the minor league uh, for Milwaukee in 1990. So, at age 37, he was still pitching in Major League Baseball. So, kind of a long and interesting career for Roy Thomas, who was a first-round draft pick. Okay, there's our lineup today versus Oil Can Boyd. We have Terry Kennedy back in there, catcher. Uh, and we've given... Uh, Ricky Henderson the day off, and obviously Lance Parrish will be sitting it out. Uh, and and uh, Andre Dawson will be in there in center field instead of Chet Lemon. I wanted to get our most successful batters in there uh, as because we really do need this victory today. 
Here's uh, the lineup officially for today. Sweet Lou leading off, playing second base, batting second. And DHing today is Greg Brock. Batting third in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting cleanup, playing third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting sixth in center field is Andre Dawson. Batting seventh in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting eighth, playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. And batting ninth and catching today is Terry Kennedy. Let's take a look at old Cam Boyd making his ninth start of the season. He is five and two with a 363 ERA off to his best start of his career. 34 Ks in 62 innings of pitch. In fact, uh, take a look at his walk to strikeout ratio there. Pretty darn solid. Uh, opponents are betting 282 against him, so he doesn't give up quite a few hits. His fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour, and he is a ground ball pitcher, 43%. The fastball is his best pitch. It is rated a 93. He's got an 80, uh, curveball rated 85, and two other really great uh, pitches that are just below average, so practically a four-pitch pitcher. Overall rating is a 94. He's 23 years old. He doesn't go to, to uh, arbitration until after next season. Uh, did he pitch against Detroit this year? He did. He threw 101 pitches back on April 12th, going five and two-thirds inning, giving up three runs on nine hits and three walks uh, for the no decision. Okay, here is the Red Sox defensive alignment today. Again, they have uh, Dennis Littlejohn behind the plate, who's got a 94 arm. We have Gold Glovers at second base and in center field with Freddie Lynn. Here is Sweet Lou leading off against Oil Can Boyd. Lou has a home run in his career. Oh, there we go! His second home run off Oil Can Boyd. How many leadoff home runs does Whitaker have this year? He now is tied for the team lead with eight dogs. Nicely done, that's the way you want to start it off. Tiger's getting loud early on. Up next, Greg Brock hits a ground ball to Boggs at third. One out. Glenn Wilson getting a spot start today against a right-hander. He's only batting 190 versus righties. And he walks, so we have a runner on first with one down. Mickey Hatcher up. We're going to hit and run with Hatcher. Ground ball up the middle. Good range by the shortstop, Smalley. It will move Wilson into scoring position for Murray. Two down now. Steady Eddie. One, two count. And a ground ball to Smalley. And that'll do it. So we get the leadoff home run from Lou, and we strand a runner at second. We go to the bottom of the first. Here is the official lineup rundown for Dennis Littlejohn. I'm sorry. <laughs> Betting leadoff and catching for the Red Sox is Dennis Littlejohn. Betting second, playing second base, is Marty Barrett. Betting third at third base is Wade Boggs. Betting cleanup, playing first base, is Pat Dodson. Betting fifth in left field is Jim Rice. Batting 6th in right field is Clint Hurdle. Batting 7th in center field is Freddie Olin. Batting 8th playing shortstop is Roy Smalley. And batting ninth in the DH role is Lachelle Tarver. Let's take a look at Jack Jamomo. He is making his 10th start of the season. He's 7-1 with a 3-0-2 ERA. Off to a really great start. I love the strikeout to inning pitch ratio here. He's got 50 Ks in 65 innings pitch. The opponents are betting only 215 against him. He has one complete game shutout this year. Fastball tops out at 95 miles an hour. He is a ground ball pitcher 44% of the time. He's got three excellent pitches, including his splitter, which is rated a 93, a fastball that's an 88, and a slider that is an 80. Overall rated in 85, he's 28 years old, goes to free agency next season. I imagine he has faced Boston this year, yeah, two times. And he has won both games. He had uh, 
eight scoreless innings on opening day. Uh, he gave up one hit, wow, and five walks, which is never good. And then he got the win on April 13th, going eight and two-third innings with uh, four earned runs and eight hits given up. His last start against Toronto, he got a no decision, going seven innings, uh, giving up five hits and three runs. Let's take a look at the Tigers' defense. We have Gold Glovers at first and second with Henderson having the day off and Kennedy behind the plate rated 81 with his arm. Here's uh, Dennis Littlejohn leading off. Morris strikes out Littlejohn. There we go. Nice start for Morris. Comes out throwing strikes. One down for Marty Barrett who pops it up just to the left side of second base. The shortstop side, and Trammell is the one that makes the catch. Two down, Wade Boggs gets a base hit to center field. Trying to start a two-out rally as Pat Dodson steps in. Only batter in the lineup, below 200, batting 197 with three home runs. Sharp line drive to the left, but Gibby tracks it down. We go to the top of the second, 1-0 Detroit. We've got Dawson, Gibby, and Trammell do up. Here's Andre Dawson leading off. Smokes it right back up the middle. That was an 88-mile-an-hour fastball from Boyd, and Dawson gets a single. Do we want to steal with Dawson? 67% uh, chance. I'm going to say no. We've dropped Gibby down in the lineup. He is struggling a lot lately. We're going to let him take a cut here. See if we can't get him off the schneid. Lining out to center field. There's one down. Okay, here's Trammell. We're going to hit and run with Tram. Let's get Dawson in motion. And there we go. Base hit over the third baseman's head. All the way up against the wall. And with the... Uh, uh, base runner running, Dawson will score from first. So an RBI double for Alan Trammell, his fifth on the season. And it's 2 nothing, Detroit. Runner in scoring position, here's Terry Kennedy. Kennedy strikes out swinging. And we're back to the top of the lineup with Lou. Lou... Started the game off with a crushing home run. And here he grounds it to second. So we put another run on the board on the RBI double from Trammell. It is 2-0 as Jim Rice steps in against Jack Morris. Rice having a decent year, batting 335 with six home runs. Uh, obviously his batting average is great, but he just still doesn't have the power. As he strikes out swinging, two Ks from Jack Morris. Up next is Clint Hurdle. He hits a comebacker to Morris. Two quick outs for Freddie Lynn. Lynn batting 244 with three home runs, and he taps it right back to Morris, and that'll do it. We go to the top of the third inning. Greg Brock leading it off. It's Brock Ness Monster, Glenn Wilson, and Mickey Hatcher. Rock pops it up into foul ground on the first base side. And Dodson makes the catch. One out. Glenn Wilson up next. Hits a ground ball to Barrett. The Gold Glover makes the play. Two outs. And Sticky Mickey flips it over the first baseman's head all the way down into the corner. That's the pesky pole down there. Uh, do we want to go for two? We're not. We're going to say no. I know it's sixty percent, and Clint Hurdle, does, Clint Hurdle does not have a good arm, but for some reason he always guns us down. So we are not going to run on Clint Hurdle. We will let Murray take a cut. Now he's zero for six in his career versus Oil Can Boyd, and he strikes out on a curveball. So we leave Hatcher stranded at first. We head to the bottom of the third. Roy Smalley leading off. Smalley in the eighth spot, batting 338. 
Dropping it into left center field. That is a base hit. Falls in front of Dawson. Leadoff man is on. Here's Lachelle Tarver. Smallish, I don't think he'll be running. Won't matter anyway. He'll score on that double into the gap. Uh, Smalley holds up at third. So that's a double for Tarver. His sixth double on the season. Second and third with nobody out. We will pull the corners in for Dennis Littlejohn. We don't mind letting a run score. There we go. As uh, Littlejohn strikes out, three Ks for Morris. Now we're going to pull third base in. If uh, Barrett pulls it to third, we'll hold the runner or go home. Otherwise, anywhere else we'll give up that run for an out. Jack throws a, I think it was a curveball. There's a slider. That was a fastball, way off. 93 mile an hour fastball. Gets Barrett to pop it up to first. And we've got a chance of getting out of this inning unscathed, but we're going to have to get past Wade Boggs. Uh, Boggs doesn't have a ton of power, but he is capable of hitting a home run. We're going to pull the outfield in, though. Try to prevent Tarver from scoring from second, and that'll get him in anyway. Two-run double from Boggs. Unbelievable. Ten doubles for Boggs this year. And that gets his batting average up to 301. Game is tied. That is a real pisser there. As Dodson hits a grounder to short. And that'll do it. Game is tied at two. Going to the top of the fourth inning. Dawson, Gibby, and Trammell do up. Big sweeping curveball from Boyd. As Dawson pops it up to Barrett. One down. Next up is Gibby. Gibby crushes it to center field for a base hit. That was a frozen rope. Not going to go for two. Good sign from Gibson that he's maybe punching his way out of this slump. Travel up next. We're going to hit and run. Uh, ground ball to short. Gibby will advance and give Terry Kennedy a chance to break the tie. Nope. Popping it up. So Gibson will be stranded on second. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jack Morris at 43 pitches as he faces Jim Rice. And Rice... Puts a charge into it, right into that little alcove out there. And uh, just to the right of dead center field. 419 feet. And Dawson tracks it down. One down. Clint Hurdle walks. That's the first walk from Morris. One down, runner on first for Fred Lynn. And Hurdle gets picked off first by Jack. That is his second caught stealing on the season. Base is empty for Fred Lynn, who laces it into left center field for a base hit. Five hits now against Morris. Runner on first. Here's Roy Smalley. Smalley had a hit the first time up. And then Lynn tries to steal second on Kennedy. And Kennedy throws him out. Nicely done. We go to the top of the fifth. The defense picking it up for Jack today. We start off the fifth inning with Lou Whitaker doubling down the left field line. Gets it just past the glove of Boggs. And that is Lou's fourth double on the season. Not much of a doubles guy, but he can crush it. So Lou's got a, a home run and a double today. Let's try to have Brock pull it. Of oh, the ball it is. There we go. Oh, it's a base hit! Past the glove of Dodson. We got an RBI single from Brock. 
And the Tigers take the lead, 3-2. to two. We want to hit and run here with uh, Brock at first and Glenn Wilson at the plate. Wilson strikes out. No, is that just a missed hit and run? Brock steals second base as Wilson swings through it. That is the first stolen base for Greg Brock this season. He had three last year. I feel like we've had a lot of success with missed hit and runs. We're going to let Wilson just take a cut as he sends it to center. No, we are definitely not going to tag on the three-time Gold Glove winner in center field. One down, runner at second for Mickey Hatcher. Pulls it to left. There's a hit. Will Brock score? He does. Do we want to go for two? No, we're just going to hold with an RBI single for Hatcher. That is his team leading 35th RBI. Remember, Eddie Murray had the team lead for a long time. He was averaging one per game. And uh, he has not had an RBI in quite a while. Pitch to Murray, who hits it right into the dirt in front of Little John. They get the, they get the lead runner at second. So Murray's on first with two down and Andre Dawson up. And Dawson will ground out to Smalley at short. Okay, we're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers come back, put two on the board, and it's four to two, Detroit. We have eight, nine, and one due up with Smalley, Tarver, and Little John. Roy Smalley leading off with a ground ball to Tram. There is one down. Next up, Lachelle Tarver, skying it into left center field. Just short of the warning track, 347 feet. Two outs. Here's Dennis Littlejohn, struck out both times. Morris has faced him, and there's a base hit to left. Six hits now for the Red Sox, and Marty Barrett is up. Barrett three for 14 in his career against Morris. And there's hit number four. Man, I hate seeing Boggs up with uh, base runners on. I have no idea what to do because he could just hit the ball anywhere he wants at will. So we're just going to throw it. And he's going to drop it into center field. Come on, Dawson. Falls in for a hit. Another RBI. Boggs has driven in all three runs today, and it's first and third with two outs. And Pat, Pat Dodson up. All right, well, Morris at 72 pitches. I'd like to get him through the fifth with the lead. Nope. No, no, it's going to be carry deep enough for a out. There we go. Gibson, good job tracking it down out there. Tigers maintain the lead uh, despite the Red Sox getting a run on the board. So it's 4-3, to three, top of the sixth. Let's look at the in-game stats. Player of the game so far, probably Whitaker. Two for three with the home run. Um, wait, who just had the go-ahead RBI? Was that Hatcher? I can't remember now. Okay, so here's Gibby leading off against Boyd. Boyd's at 85 pitches. 0-2 count, and Gibson protecting the plate, pops it up. One out. The bottom of the lineup, guys, they should be taking as many pitches as they can to get Boyd out of the ball game. Trammell swinging on the first pitch. Hey, that's a base hit, though. That's always good. Nope, we're not going for two. Here's Terry Kennedy. We could hit and run with Kennedy. And we will stay out of the double play. And a base hit to right. First pitch swinging. And the Tigers find themselves with runners at first and third. With one out. And Sweet Lou at the plate. He's having a day. Lou's good. But we're going to let Lou swing away instead of uh, hitting and running. 
And he pops it up. I mean, if we don't score a run here, this will not be a successful inning. We have not, I mean, we may have got a couple hits. Another first pitch swing, and that'll get him out of the inning. So that's that's really disappointing as uh, Oil Cam Boyd at 94 pitches, despite giving up 10 hits and a walk. We go to the bottom of the six. Here's Jim Rice leading off. Rice 0 for 2 today with the strikeout. He sends a fly ball to center that Dawson can catch easily. And he does. One out. Here's Clint Hurdle. He had one free pass today. And now a base hit to right. Nine hits against Morris. He, he does struggle against Boston. We saw in the uh, pregame that the current Red Sox lineup was batting uh, 321 against him. Runner on first and Lynn. Base hit that gets past Trammell. And now we find ourselves in trouble. Pulling the outfield in with Roy Smalley up. That's a tying run at second base. Ground ball to second. Let's turn two. Yes. Good job. 463 double play. Gets Morris out of it. We go to the top of the seventh inning. We're up a run as Wilson, the number three hitter, will lead off. He's 0 for 2 with a walk today. And he slices it to right field. Lining out to Hurdle. One down. Ground ball to short. Boyd is at uh, the century mark with two down and Eddie Murray up. And all this first pitch swinging is terrible. I wish there was a way that I could, you know, manipulate how they should bat in certain situations. I mean, I guess I could. We could go to one. We could go to pitch by pitch mode. Um, so I guess it, that is possible, but that's not what I'm looking for here. All right, Lachelle Tarver, Little John, and Barrett up. And then we got a, a bunch of lefties. So this will be it for Trammell, uh, for uh, Morris against Tarver. Uh, we're going to let him uh, go through these three. And he's going to walk. And, no, no. Ground ball to first. That looked like ball four for Scholl. Instead, it's just a ground ball to first. One down. Here's Dennis Little John. Little John hits a grounder to second, and he boots it. Come on. Little John safe at first on the error by Whitaker. One down. Here's Brett. So this is the last batter that Morris will face. Ground ball to third. Could that be a double play? Oh, okay. That is total bullshit. Unbelievable. We are going to go right to our best lefty, and that's Dave Rucker. Unbelievable. Rucker's been pretty solid. He's already been down to the minors. We've brought him back up, so he's got a little bit of a, some rest, I guess. Uh, 13 Ks in 12 and two-thirds innings. Six saves. He's got one bluey. Uh, fastball. Tops out at 91 miles an hour. He is a ground ball pitcher, which is, which is great because we're going to be pulling the infield in. His best pitch is a fastball. He's got that great slider. Uh, fork ball below average. And uh, he doesn't go to arbitration until next year. So, Infield in. Back-to-back -back errors, of course. And Wade Boggs, one of the best hitters. He's 3-for-3 three and three, 3 RBIs today. Um, we could walk him to get to Dodson, but we've got to face the music here. Ground ball at the middle. Whitaker ranges over, and he goes home to get the lead runner at the plate. Great job by Lou. That was exactly what we needed. And now we're going to face the 114 hitting Dodson. Lefty on lefty. Not so good. 
and he walks him. Absolutely going to happen with the righty up next. So that there was no doubt that was going to happen. So they're doing everything they can to stop us here. Uh, I'd love to bring in Carl Willis, but we're going to go to Roy Thomas to face Jim Rice. Uh, we're playing the odds. We've already talked about Roy Thomas, so you know uh, his background somewhat. Uh, he's been pretty good so far. And we're asking a lot of the veteran here with the bases loaded and two down in the bottom of the seventh. And Hall of Famer Jim Rice betting 324 versus righties. And yeah, that'll give him the lead. Yeah, I mean, there was nothing we were ever going to be able to do to prevent any of that from happening. So we'll bring in Keith Comstock. He does not get lefties out very well, but the damage has been done, so whatever happens now happens. All right, so the Red Sox take the lead. Morris will not get the victory. Um, I guess technically he would get the loss because those errors happened on his watch, right? Um, I don't know. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Boyd's still in there. That's, I mean, again, we probably should have taken more pitches. Still first pitch swinging, second pitch swinging in this situation. One down. Gibson gets a base hit past the glove of Smalley. That's the tying run. One down. Runner on first. We're going to hit and run. Base hit up the middle. Okay, so that's going to do it. They're going to bring in Eck, who we absolutely rocked the first time we saw him this series. Uh, he gave up the home run to uh, Parrish, right? That was a three-run home run. So, um, Eckersley's been struggling. Well, we're going to hit and run with uh, Terry Kennedy. He's one for three on the day. Ground ball to third. Gibson ties the ball game. Good job. And Trammell in scoring position for Whitaker. Can we get the lead back this quickly? Yes, we can! Nicely done, Eckersley. A shell of himself. Tigers retake the lead. It's 6 to 5. That's the third hit for Whitaker today. He's got a single, a double, and a home run. I don't think he'll get another at bat to get a chance at the cycle. Here's Greg Brock. And he goes down the left field line. Whitaker has to hold it second. Not sure why exactly, but we keep it moving here. Nice two-out rally. Glenn Wilson at the plate. Over three today. And he strikes out. Okay. Tigers take back the lead. We have to keep Comstock in there. He does not pitch well uh, versus lefties, but we don't have any other options. If we can get through this inning, as you can see, they bat 290 against him. If we, if we can get through this inning with the lead, at least we could bring in uh, Weaver. In fact, you know what? We might actually bring him in for the right-handers. So Here we go. Roy Smalley leading off. And a hit. 12 hits for the Red Sox. They will not go quietly. Um, Tarver might bunt. We're going to bring the corners in. Uh, his bunting is 83, so it's above average. He's a speedy guy. I mean, it would make sense. Instead, he pops it up the center field where Dawson makes the catch. That's going to do it for Comstock. We're going to bring in Weaver to get a four-out save. Roger Weaver, he did have a couple tough outings recently, right? Let's take a look at his log. Um, well, I guess he had the one really tough one against Toronto. 
and then he gave up back-to-back -back two run uh, two runs against uh, Milwaukee and the Sox so uh, he's not impervious uh, but our righties are batting 185 against him lefties are batting 111 and that's what we need right now to shut this inning down okay Smalley on first here's Dennis Littlejohn One out. Ground ball to short trip up. Double play gets him out of it. There we go. We go to the top of the ninth. We have Hatcher, Murray, and Dawson do up against the Eck. The Eck sucks. Base hit for Hatcher. That's his third hit of the game. Tigers have 15 hits. And yet, we have not really managed to do anything. Here's Murray. Murray is due. He's 0 for 4. And we're gonna, we could hit and run here, but what's the point? We may as well let him take a cut. Maybe I'll run into one. Nope. Fly ball to center field. Now we'll hit and run with Andre Dawson, who's 1 for 4 today. Oh, man. On the same situation, Hatcher's got a two stolen base game today as uh, Dawson cannot con make contact with pitches. He does strike out. Good job by Hatcher, though. You've got to give him credit for uh, uh, keeping his head into the ball game. Will Gibby come through? It's, it's two for four on the day. He does! A base hit for Gibby. Hatcher around third, and there's another insurance run. Good job by Gibson. He's three for five on the day. And that's going to bring up Trammell. No Trammell strikes out. It's going to be a tough call for player of the game. I think it might be Whitaker, but we'll have to analyze. Three for five for Hatcher and two stolen bases. That's nothing to sneeze at. Okay, we got to get through the game first here, though. Uh, so it's Barrett. Boggs and Dodson against Weaver. We feel good about this, though. Uh, we do not have Guy Solaris to replace Hatcher anymore. Barrett will lead off with a base hit, possibly a double, maybe a triple. That is a double for Barrett, who's 12th on the season. That run doesn't mean anything. We need to go after the batters, but it is Wade Boggs. Uh, we're going to play the outfield straight away. Brown ball to third. Wow. Oh, come on! What total horseshit. Unbelievable. Hatcher, come on. A 929 fielding percentage at third base. Six errors. Worse than last year. Look at his defensive range. He, his defensive war is worse through 40 games than it was for the whole season last year. And that's going to maybe cost us the ball game. Um, again, that run doesn't mean anything. we got to get a double play here. So we'll give up that run if we can get Dodson to ground into a double play. Uh, no speed at first and uh, or at the plate. Here we go. Nope, basic. Fine, 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 fine. We'll take the loss. That's the way it goes. Pull the infield in. Here's Jim Rice. Yeah, there was never anything we could do in this game to win. That's unbelievable. That'll do it. Well, I mean, I don't really know what to say. I mean, we've really just absolutely fallen apart defensively. I guess there is something to be said for Guy Solars, you know. Tigers lose 8-7. to seven. Uh, And that is really going to be a game that we'll have to remember uh, at the end of the season. Um as uh, we, now we go to face the Yankees, and uh, they are definitely 
uh, playing better baseball than us right now. Let's take a look at the standings. Yeah, they're three games back. I mean, that's kind of like, I mean, I don't know what the code is for the game, like how it's written. Uh, but I feel like when you're in mogul mode, you know, you're in um, the, the highest level, they do things like this specific game where, um, you know, at one point we had t we were up 10 games. We were, we were 10 games ahead of every other team early in the season. And now, you know, I feel like the game is sort of forcing it back to a level where it's a fair competition. Uh, now there's, you know, like there's no decision that I can make that's going to be the right decision. And you also have to consider the fact that I do have some of our uh, more prominent bullpen arms in the, in the minor leagues. So maybe it'll work out for us in the long run. But we're three games back heading into New York, and we very well could be tied, which makes it more fun for the, for the viewer, but it just really pisses me off, to be honest. Let's take a look at the headline news. Yankees closing in the Tigers. Thanks. Like, I needed to be reminded of that. They win 12-3 over the Royals. Uh, Dennis Wirth leads the Yankees offense with a, uh, a triple, a couple walks, whatever. Uh, Keith Creel, I believe that was his first start of the season. He got hit hard by the Yankees in five innings. Uh, Brian Diet got two hits. Otis Nixon. Toronto's Todd shuts down the... Wow, that guy gets a shutout? That's incredible. Um, complete game shutout. Was it, and they were in Toronto. Uh, Corcoran goes three for four. Garth Orge had a hit. Taking a look at the transactions. There is a trade. Oh, wow. What is going on with Atlanta? It doesn't make any sense what they're doing. They trade their backup first baseman to the Cubbies. For another outfielder, this makes no sense. Ken Phelps, he's not even in the majors in, for, for Chicago. Uh, he's going to go to AAA. The one thing about Ken Phelps, you may remember when he was on Kansas City, he had the two grand slams in one inning against us. Uh, that, was a, that was a tough game. Jeff Burrows. Goes to Atlanta to play left field. I, I don't get it. He's He did play for Atlanta uh, before we started our sim. And his rating is terrible. He's betting 344, though. Oh, wait. I wanted to see, was he going to arbitration? No, he's not even... I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, are, not, are they dumping salary? Um, I love Lamp. He goes to the Braves, and he's in Triple A. This trade makes no sense at all. Um, let's take a look at Atlanta and look at their uh, lineup without the DH. I don't get it. So Jeffrey Leonard and Mitchell Page. Both get sent down. I guess it makes sense. They're both below 80, right? Uh, they traded Milt Thompson, who was their center fielder, and that puts Brett Butler in center field. I could see that happening, I guess. Right field is Lynn Jones, who they just got from Toronto, who doesn't hit any home runs. And then they trade for Jeff Burroughs to play left field, and he does have some pop but they don't even have them batting in the, you know, three, four, five spot. And they don't have a catcher, which is weird. Uh, and they got Ron Gardenhire from the Mets. Yeah, this is, this is kind of a, I think they traded for Joel Youngblood and they already set him down, right? So I don't know what the hell they're doing. What is their... I'm sure most of you have already checked out, so I'm just talking to myself at this point. But I'm also kind of curious, um, looking at their finances. Yeah, their team payroll is $2 million below their budget. And they're in first place. So maybe they're looking to gear up for a big trade. Um, maybe for a starting pitcher or something that, you know, 
that'll get their payroll up. I, I don't know what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense. So, all right. What a shitty game. Let's pull up the box score. I mean, the player of the game is pointless at this juncture. I mean, we may as well give it to you. Uh, Whitaker, who had a, a single, a double, a home run to lead off the ball game. Um, the errors killed us. Roger Weaver takes the loss. Not his fault. Uh, he gave up, four, I mean, they, you know. He gave up three runs, two earned. There were two errors uh, while he was pitching. Um, he had a walk. I just, uh, you know, I, I, again, we do have our, uh, our, our poor uh, 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 relievers in there, so it's not much we can do. Eckersley, who was terrible, gets the win. And um, how did Hatcher not get two stolen bases? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. All right, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow. I'll face the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. It's a big series for Bay. We'll see you then. Have a good night.